Hello and welcome to the Fulhamish Quick Take here from the Half Moon Putney after our 1 0 defeat to Manchester United on Saturday afternoon. A dispiriting game, a deflating end to it for sure. Fulham 18 shots, two on target. I think that tells most of the story. We're here at the Half Moon in Putney. Drowning our sorrows, uh, well and truly. Hello, George. You're right, Sammy. Yeah, I mean, just saw it coming a mile off. If a team are in turmoil, Fulham are the sides that they want to face to get them out of their rut. We've seen it. We saw it this season with Chelsea. We've seen it time and time again. It's a tale as old of time. There are three things certain in life: death, taxes. Fulham will endure bad run of form that's that's just the way it is unfortunately yeah I mean it is quite something you think of the three games we played against them last year in all of the games I think Fulham had massive opportunities to win with a better side in most of them or certainly had large spells of dominance once again that was the case today but just almost knew entering the kind of 85th minute onwards nil nil that this United side were just going to do something, weren't they? Of course they were, to, to, to end this horrendous run they've been on. And it's just, it's it was sickening, wasn't it? That was, that's the word. Yeah, and the thing is, when you face a team like Manchester United in, in the situation that they currently find themselves in, it, it reminded me a lot, going into this game, I was really excited. It reminded me of, in the, I believe it was 2009-2010 season, the, the, the season where we beat Manchester United 3-1 at home. Man U were in a really bad way. They had played with injury problems. I think they were playing like Michael Carrick at centre-back that day or something. And you went in, you looked at the, like Rashford out, you know, you're thinking, like, Casemiro not playing. You're like, OK, they're just in a really bad way you think okay this is this is our day and I was feeling like that however that's caveated with the knowledge that A all the points that I mentioned earlier and B when you've got the quality that they do on the pitch players like Garnacho, Bruno Fernandes they can just get a goal at any minute and you have that looming over you the whole time and this Manchester United time team were there for the taking that's the thing that's most frustrating that's the thing that is so gutting about the way that we lost yes it's predictable the way the manner in which we did but I just wish that we'd gone out with it there with a little bit more like a little bit more bollocks you know yeah I mean it just feels like this Fulham team does have something about particularly top six sides and just not you know, playing well nearly all the games I could think of last year there was a couple of notable exceptions against those top top sides but we played well you know, we're valiant and, and ultimately coming away with nearly always zero points, not even one point. It's just like, I just wonder if it's a mindset thing of, like, are we are we a little bit scared, for once of a slightly better word, against these top teams? Um, I don't know whether it's scared because it's not as if we let them come. Like, we really take the game to the top six teams, which is the most frustrating thing. We do everything right. I think it's just those momentary lapses of concentration which cost us and as I said earlier when you do have quality in the side as Manchester United do as Chelsea do um, it you just get easily punished and you can't afford to make any mistakes and Manchester United look terrible today they look really bad um, I don't know whether it's that we're frightened it's just I don't know you call it like the, the, the winning mindset or whatever and it's what Manchester had you know, I'd had under Alex Ferguson where it's just like you know you can just like grind games out but this wasn't the Man U that we faced today it wasn't at all um, I don't know what it is I really don't I think I think ultimately what it comes down to to answer your question is just these momentary lapses of concentration which allow them in and then and then you all the hard graft that you put in throughout the 90 minutes just all of a sudden falls into um, insignificance because you know they, they've eventually just got that one chance and taken it you know but also what, what, do you, what do you what do you think it is by the way like what how do you how do you what what is this barrier that we have against the top six that is stopping us from getting that much anticipated scout I don't know. I just feel like there was a couple of moments today, really small, insignificant moments, maybe even in defence, where I feel like against a slightly lesser team, if it had been Wolves or Luton, where maybe we take a gamble, take a risk, try and break the lines, we try and go past a player. Whereas today, I felt there was a couple of moments where we maybe played slightly within ourselves or overthought things because, oh, it's Man United, it's a big game. I, I'm not necessarily saying that's the reason. I do also think, George, I wanted to come on to this, just our toothlessness. 18 shots, two on target. There were so many opportunities, not just like, oh, we missed, we didn't miss huge amounts of big chances, but the amount of moments where we 
had an overload or four on three or Willian got into a good position or Robinson got into a good position or Harry Wilson got into a good position and we just didn't take the opportunities or a Wobie skied one over the bar when really he's got to be getting on target. We just, our, our attacking play at the moment is just so good, so good, so, so good. Oh, it's just, it's just deflating to watch. Yeah, I thought Willian really took it to them in the first half especially and looks like our most potent kind of attacking outlet and you think that if anything is going to come from this game it's going to be by William we're having quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of good good attacks from that left hand side Robinson I mean we've spoken about it like quite before on the pod like what that guy would be worth if he had a you know like a a zinger of a cross on him and that end product because some of the crosses today that he get himself into this most amazing position you know he'd take it past three players demonstrate his athleticism and just like you'd be like yes this is this is good and then he'd just do this spoony cross and you're like ah oh, it's it's really frustrating it's the, it's the it's the big thing that's holding us back at the minute I and mean, we've spoken at length about our striker issues I thought um, Moon is like put in a shift as he always does but I never really felt that he was having that big an influence on the game at any moment um, and you've got to think like if we were to have Mitrovic in this side we would have had three points today that, that, that's the feeling right yeah I literally heard uh, father and son on the way back down the palace road and I literally heard the son say to his dad if we had Mitrovic today we'd have won that game and I was just there like yeah that is the that is the most concise a bit of analysis but I'm almost just fed up with that analysis because it's like it's got to be more complicated than that but like I, don't think, I, don't, I really don't think it is I think that's that's what it comes down to you need that talent man you need the person who's going to get convert those chances we had some good chances today the two shots on target I'm amazed that actually it was only two shots in total because they were both quite significant saves from Anana weren't they the, the one that um, Harry Wilson that was he stuck an arm up and he, it was one of those he, you couldn't really tell where it went but it was a good save and then Palinia fell to him blasted it as hard as he possibly could that was the chance wasn't yeah. it yeah it feels like that was the chance and I mean you either do two things at that moment, you either place it or you just hit it as hard as you can. It was, seem, I mean, I sit in the putting but it, was, it seemed like it was quite close, wasn't it? It was honestly, it was it was guilt edge. It, it, as much as I think that Polina has got a shot on him, it fell to the wrong player. In that moment, you need a striker who is ice cold under his veins. Polina just couldn't believe his luck. It was a, it was obviously a mishit pass that came to him. Yeah, but you do see Polina put those away, you know, like and we've, we've seen Polina score more difficult Whoa. chances than that from outside the area. I feel like you see Polina score worldies and the guy in a goal he scored against Brighton, but you don't see Polina running through one-on-one, -on -one, giving the keeper the eyes and dinking him very often, which is actually what that moment needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we wanted Harry Wilson on the end of that or a Willian or someone. Yeah, that's just, um, yeah, unfortunate, but what can you do, you know? What can you do? It's just, it's just a really heart-wrenching. Like, Manchester United are I was saying to you before, Sammy, like, I, I never, I wasn't ever on that big bandwagon of, you know, screw United, the, the ones that everyone loves to hate. I never really felt that until this year. And I really wanted to win that game. It would have been incredible. And it was such a good opportunity. And it was an opportunity wasted, unfortunately. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. I, I do think that Silver's subs in this game. <sighs> Football is a game of momentum and we had massive momentum in around the 60th, 70th minute. I felt like Manchester United subs wrestled the game back into their control. And whilst, yes, OK, you can blame one moment, a poor clearance from Polina and all of that, Man United had the momentum going into that final five minutes. It felt like our subs killed us you know Awobi must have played about seven different positions before eventually coming off the pitch <laughs> no he did he did he played he played three different positions yeah. before going off yeah, yeah. and, and it, was, like, it was funny like seeing his reaction because there'd be another sub and he'd be like all right yeah yeah cool cool yeah. cool 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 yeah I mean like speaks volumes for his versatility but at the same time it's just like it's hard to imagine really find your groove as a player like when you're just getting like potted around everywhere I, I, it's just like, I, I get it, sometimes like, you know, we were crying out for maybe a sub or two, but to make five like we did, and it's always easy kind of after the event to criticise these moments. If it had finished nil-nil, we wouldn't even be thinking about the subs he made, but I mean, it was quite weird. Obviously, Raul Jimenez came on just to play left wing just before we scored. It, 
it just felt chaotic, really, and, and no one in the position, and no one in the team knew their position, and we had so much control over the game, really, until the subs came on. I feel like Marco's intentions in those substitutions were to go on and win the game, which I am all for. However, against Brighton, he got the substitutions right. Against United, he got them wrong. It did just sap our, you know. I feel like when you, as we did today, start with all of your most potent attacking players in the starting eleven, our bench was looking pretty, you know, threadbare in terms of like who, where's the impact sub coming yeah. from? I mean, I love Bobby Deckard over Reed. I think he's genuinely one of our most, if not our most consistent performer. However, when you bring in him, Jimenez, Sasa Lukic on to make an impact, they're not really impact subs, you know, who are going to stir things up and cause the breakthrough. And then when you're taking off players like Awobi and, you know, um, Harry Wilson, Willian, who are those players that are going to break the line, it just doesn't really doesn't really bode well for a kind of like let's push on and get the goal there is an element of like with Fulham I feel like you know as much as we're here negating the fact that Harry Wilson's constantly on the bench there is something to be said for having a few aces up your sleeve and not putting them all on the field for the at, at, at the first minute it's why I think when we can get Adama back yeah it yeah. will be so critical because we just have no one when you play the likes of Harry Wilson from the start there's no one to come off and, and bring some energy when it's nil-nil. And that's what we needed. And just, as you said, those players that came on, just, they're great players, but they're not, they're, not, they're not changing games. Yeah, I think it comes down to the fact that we just don't have the squad depth that United do. That was, we went toe-to-toe -to, -toe to them for 90 minutes, arguably the better side with the better chances. I mean, I know they had the goal chalked off in the first half, but off the bench, they just... It, that was the turning point, wasn't it? Our substitutions didn't really help us push on and theirs helped them gain the momentum and eventually got that chance and took it. It's just, um, yeah, not really much more to it than that. Um, the ticket price protest happened today. Um, I thought all in all, like, it went, I think it went well. Like, especially the, um, the pre-match kind of with the banner and the meet-up from Bishop's Park. I thought that looked that re re really good. And whilst I think it's disappointing that the yellow card protest didn't get picked up as much as everyone would have liked on the television, from, from all accounts, I obviously haven't seen the television, but I'm just from what I've heard. Certainly, if you were there in the stadium today and if you were attending the match, you knew that there was a protest today. Yeah, absolutely. A really good showing at Bishop's Park uh, before the game. When we had the banner, everyone there's you know hundreds of people there. It was it was it was great, and you know good show of solidarity. And it were, you know, it seemed to have got picked up on television, and the coverage was was good. And then, I mean, they looked very impressive. I obviously see in the Putney end, so looking onto the Hammersmith end, you just a sea of yellow. Uh, I find it quite odd that it wasn't picked up on you know the Sky coverage today. That you know for the for the game but yeah it was this feeling among the ground of you know something needs to be done about it um, obviously it's kind of strangely I think divided opinion amongst the fan base to some extent you know people have criticised it like is it impactful enough but I think at this stage in the conversation it's about as you know it's a peaceful process we're not you know causing disruption or anything like that making our point heard I think it's went about as well as you could have hoped really yeah. and I, I really do hope that we get at least some kind of statement from the club or a response because uh, the most frustrating and disappointing thing would be if we just it just gets ignored and not even acknowledged or mentioned because then you know like <laughs> it's gonna have to go to the next stage but um, we as a club want as a fan base want to be listened to and if it was just to fall on deaf ears then it's gonna it's gonna have to go up to the next level isn't it 100 and that's my feelings of it as well i think it went as well as it could have done today i think obviously lack of tv coverage is a bit of a shame but ultimately if you were there in the ground at craven cottage today there's there's no way anyone could have not ignored it or not seen it what you yeah, choose yeah. to then do with with that kind of information that they get is is up to the club and the higher-ups but there's no way if you were at the game today that you wouldn't have felt that that process was happening just like yeah, the buzz yeah, around yeah. Stevenage Road etc 100% and and it's a like it it's a 
conscious decision. If the club choose to ignore it, that's a conscious decision. You know, like we, we've made our voices heard as a fan base. We're not standing for this like incremental ticket rising, pricing fans that have supported the club for decades out in favour of, you know, tourists and away fans and what have you, just people who want to... It was bad today, by the way, when oh, United scored. I had five Manchester United fans sat around me. There were empty seats, um, presumably due to the £77 pound, like, ticket price that slapped on it. And, uh, yeah, it was it, just surrounded by United fans. And the atmosphere, I think, suffers. What well, Obviously, it suffers from that. We haven't got people who actually genuinely have a care for the club and they're either here because oh I'm you know like I'm 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 in London for the day and I get to go to Manchester United Fuller you know a special tree and that, that, that's fair enough if you want to do that but when that's the kind of like making up a big subset of your you know the people that are attending games it's going to have a negative impact on the atmosphere so and there were certainly points I know it's in the part in the end so it's like it's 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 not uh, it's not the most raucous section of the ground I will no caveat with, but there were points where it was really like the atmosphere was pretty stale, like you know, like not a lot going on, and it's because you get part timers coming along. You want to prioritise people who have a passion for the football club, support the football club, uh, have supported the football club for decades, and unfortunately, it's it's swinging the other way. But yeah, it's we've made our voices heard. It's, it would have been impossible to ignore if the club choose to ignore it. That's a conscious decision on them, and they've seen what's happened. They're ignoring it, and. Um, and yeah, then it's going to have to go to, you know, round three. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens uh, coming up. Uh, that'll do for the quick take today. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks, George. Pleasure. Yeah, shame about the result, but you know. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. Cheers, drown our sorrows. And we'll uh, see you very soon. Thanks for watching the quick take today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, check out the podcast, which will be out tomorrow. Come on, you whites. You whites.